Hello guys, uh, welcome to FOSC Coding School. This is your host, Yogendra. So guys, for a couple of weeks, I think we started around Diwali. We at FOSC are talking to a lot of people who are aspiring data scientists, who want to make entry into DS domain as analyst or ML engineer or data engineer or deep learning engineer, or sometimes into visualizations. Now, while talking to them, right, because most of them were either freshers or recent graduates or working professionals with less than five years of experience, they all are struggling to get data science jobs and internship. Now we know that India has become the second largest data science hub. So there is no issue of jobs. There are plenty of jobs available in the market. Hiring is all time high in this domain because we are talking to a lot of people in the industry as well. And they are saying that they have the vacancies but they are not able to find the right people. So what is the issue? Why people are not able to make an entry into a data science domain? Now, when we analyzed these conversations later on, we found that there are a couple of issues and all of these are common in almost all of these profiles who want to make an entry in DS domain. What are the common issues? The one issue that everybody almost reported to us that their profile is not getting shortlisted. That is one thing. Now, if the profile gets shortlisted, they are not able to crack the job interviews, maybe technical interviews or maybe behavioral interviews, HR rounds. Now, and some of the people got stuck into the job search as well that they were not able to find out what is going into the market, where to apply, how to apply. So that was the issue for a lot of the people. Now, one thing that came very prominently in, in, in these conversation was that there are a lot of people who want to make a career switch. Now, this career switch can be a, from a non-technical domain to data science domain. It can be a career switch from non-computer science background to data science domain. And sometimes we got a lot of you know, people who are recently graduate, got the placement in the college and university, but the job is a sales job. And now they want to move from that. So there are a lot, lot of people in that category as well. Now, one more issue that while going into the interview round, a lot of times the hiring managers were asking about the project portfolio. That where is your portfolio? Where I can see your work? What kind of projects you have done, right? So that was the, another issue that people were not able to build a, a strong data science project portfolio. And finally, another issue that we came across that there are a lot of people they graduated in 2019 or 18, right? And is still looking for the jobs, maybe because of the COVID situation, or maybe they were not able to uh, click uh, the right opportunities. They have got a career gap, and now this is playing a kind of a major role in, in actually finding the jobs, because whenever they apply, they are kind of, asks the first question that why you have such a long gap. So these are the common pressing issues among the people, right? Uh, among the aspiring data scientists who want to make an entry into the data science domain. Now guys, see, to answer all of these questions, all of these listed questions, issues, FOSC is offering a personalized coaching program. We call it as data science career coaching, guaranteed job or money back. 
So how this program works, let's talk about it. So guys, here I'm going to share a document with you. This talks about that what is the success roadmap, how FOSS can help people to get into the data science domain and how it works. So guys, this program starts with a skill, a skill gap analysis. What we do in this skill gap analysis, we do a one-on-one -on -one session with the candidate where we identify what are the various gaps, maybe a technical gap, maybe a non-technical gap, or maybe other issues. So that skill gap analysis is done to start with, and based on that session, we generate a feedback report to the candidate, which talks about what are the gaps currently and how we can actually work on those gaps and finally achieve your dream job goal. Okay, along with the feedback report, once the candidate understands that yes, he is actually getting through those, through those issues, what is the action plan? So now we share our action plan with the candidate. Now guys, action plan duration may vary from person to person, obviously, because what is the current status of the candidate? According to that, the duration will keep on changing. Okay, now generally we keep the duration from three months to six months, okay? Now, what is the action plan? So let's drill more into this. Guys, action plan is kind of a 360 degree plan where we work on the multiple fronts, okay? What are the various, you know, uh, activities or tasks that we do? we start with a kind of a profile building, okay? What is kind of a current profile, okay? How we can manage your past profile or how we can show your past profile to the, you know, uh, potential candidate uh, hiring partners. That is one thing, profile building. Now, a lot of people who come to us to join this program, they have already done the courses and multiple certifications from the various platforms, okay? So sometimes we directly kind of put them into project portfolio building process where, we, where they directly actually, you know, start working on the projects. Sometimes people, who are very, you know, kind of uh, new to this world, data science world, and uh, to move on to the projects, first they need to learn a lot of things. So we perform upskilling. So it is kind of based on the requirements, right? So it can be learning Python, it can be, you know, uh, learning ML, DL, analytics, cloud, data engineering, UI, how to, you know, uh, uh, kind of, you know, uh, mathematics, uh, basic fundamentals, like statistics, right? So all of this. Now, as I said, it can be kind of, you know, uh, person to person, it can be, you know, uh, kind of required or not required. If you're already good in Python, so no need to kind of go back into that loop again, right? So this is very subjective from person to person. Now, once the upskilling part is done, we move on to the project portfolio. So what exactly the project portfolio is? Project portfolio is set of projects that you have done, right? That you have worked on. And through those projects, you can actually showcase your skills, technical skills to the hiring managers, right? So now in the portfolio, you, you will have a couple of projects where you work as a team member and you will have a couple of projects where you work as a solo developer like you know that was your single uh, person team that completed that project okay now along with the project portfolio you have developed very good projects but you need to put all of those projects on the github as well so we work on the github profile building as well guys again opening up account on the GitHub is not 
right, equivalent to your GitHub profile. Your GitHub profile means that you are actively pushing your code very regularly, right? And you are managing the rep repositories very well. You are updating them, you know, as on when required. Okay, so this is known as active, you know, GitHub profile. Along with the active GitHub profile, we also work on a LinkedIn profile because nowadays building a strong LinkedIn profile is very important because this has become the de facto platform for the networking. And sometimes through the networking, you might achieve, you know, your career goals, you might uh, come across a very good opportunity. So LinkedIn profile is also very important. Now, along with the portfolio, right, you have to have a nicely drafted resume because that is your kind of your ticket, right, to, uh, to kind of, you know, a uh, start of your journey, right? So resume building, and sometimes depending on the uh, openings, you might have to write a cover letter as well. And uh, the resumes with the cover letters are more likely to get shortlisted than the resumes without cover letter, okay? Now, how we are going to prepare you for the interviews? So obviously the best answer is to have the mock interviews as much as possible. So before the real interview happens, FOSC, you know, uh, a team performs multiple mock interviews with you, technical as well as behavioral, okay? One-on-one -on -one consultations would be there during this program, right? Where we talk about how you can improve, what is the current status, right? What is the action plan for, for next one week or so on? So kind of those things will happen through these one-on-one -on -one consultations, right? Project reviews, demos, all those things. And once all of these steps are done, we do an internal review, an internal review to find out whether the candidate is ready to apply for the jobs or not. Once that process is cleared, that step is, that step is cleared, right? We design a personalized job search strategy that what should be the job search strategy. And guys, you would be surprised to know that only 10 to 15% jobs are available on the job portals. Around 80% jobs are still filled through references. So having a, a right job strategy is very important to achieve the goal of getting a job, okay? Now, Along with the job, job search strategy, FOSC also has a network of partner companies where we get the requirements directly that, you know, uh, company X saying that, uh, hey, FOSC, I need so many people with such an experience, right? Or such a profile or such a skill set, right? So uh, we have a, 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 a good network of companies, startups, mid-size, you know, uh, big ones, tech companies, non-tech companies, all, all the spectrum. Now, while you actually appear for the interviews, right, again, you know, uh, rejection is a common scenario, right? Uh, that means you will apply to multiple interviews and, and, and it's very normal that you will get failed in, in, in those interviews, right? So, how we are going to improve based, you know, uh, based on those rejections. That is very important. Rejections are, are a normal part of the job search, right? But we have to kind of take, uh, consider them as, as a uh, opportunity to improve, right? For the next uh, interview. So uh, based on the rejections, we need to improvise. And while applying, while giving the interviews, we need to continue our efforts as well in terms of learning more, working on the projects, improving our skill set, right? And, and finally, on a very fine day, you get your offer letter. This is how exactly it works. And as I said, this is very personal program, okay? Personal means because for everybody, this duration would be different, right? For everybody, right? Uh, 
uh, going through these steps would be a very different experience, right? So that's why we called it as a personal, you know, uh, data science career coaching, right? Guaranteed job or money back. Now, this is how we have a, a strategy for you guys to make you successful in your data science career. Now, if you want to register for a free one-on-one -on -one session with the experts, which can better prepare you for getting the job, I'm sharing the link uh, in the description, guys. You can click on that and fill your details and our FOSS team will get in uh, touch with you guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any concerns, please do write in your comment section. Uh, our team will respond them as soon as possible. Thank you.